Hi everyone, my name is Anthony Chen. Um, I'm the Director for Strategic Products in Greater Asia. Today I'm going to walk you through three scenarios that has to show you how um, people can use the Print Experience Manager to create a, a template within the InDesign, then you can export it into the PDF. Um, PXM, in short, is basically a product to ensure the governance um, for the product that is uh, published online and offline. Imagine that your customers is already using uh, the site core, um, and so they're probably managing all the content and then publishing it with a workflow version control uh, to the website. So people will call this as a web content management, um, but when the organization is um, creating print material, a lot of time they have a separate silo, separate asset um, store, separate process uh, to manage the, the publishing of those products. So with the PXM, it's guaranteed that there's a single source of truth. Um, so you will have a governance of the information you distribute to the customers, or if you're running a campaign, then you guarantee the campaign consistencies across, across uh, online and offline. So let me show you how it works. Uh, first of all, I have the InDesign um, uh, open. Uh, InDesign is a uh, very popular tool among the designers. So I already have the PXM installed. So once it's done, then you can actually go to the windows. You can actually uh, find there's an um, item here called Sitecore and you need to just uh, click on content. What you do is uh, you see this plugin uh, in the InDesign environment. What I'm going to show you is a login. So we'll be using the um, standard uh, default Amin B login. And in the demo environment, I have the launch site core as an instance that I'm going to connect to. Okay. So when it's got connected, um, what I need to do next is to spin off uh, the project here. Um, I'm going to show you um, how to create a brand new library. Um, so I'm going to click on the Print uh, Studio project here. I basically need to create a new project, um, a new project two. Okay. So, and then you'll see on the right hand side, I have a new project here, it's got created. So now I can actually drag and drop this um, project here into the, um, the left hand side, the project pl uh, plane. Um, so what you can see here, there's a structure of uh, the InDesign, like the project, book, and then document. What I really need to do to actually create a real document, so document one, and then I need to create the page under this note, new page, page one. Okay, so once it's done, what I can do now is I can uh, render. Um, this uh, document, the template itself. So you can see the template is created. So in the first scenario, I'm going to show you how easy it is to drag and drop the InDesign, um, the cycle content into the template itself. So on the right hand side, I have basically the content tree pull out from cycle. I'm going to go to meet uh, pre-media, uh, find the running shoe uh, here. I can then click on the SN trail. So once you click on this uh, cycle item on the in the bottom part, you can actually see the fields because one cycle item have many different attributes. So what I'm going to do is I can drag and drop the product name over there. I can actually look into details. I can drag in the description. Okay. And then I can also drag the hero image over here. Okay. So let's say this is the um, the three items there. Uh, the next thing I can do is I can actually um, drag um, select all the three components, drag them into um, the page. So at this time, what happened in the InDesign um, or in the PXM plugin is, is creating a, something called the Siplet, where it will have the description of uh, 
all these uh, three elements. So I have a description, uh, the product name, and also the hero image. So we can see how easy it is to basically um, uh, guarantee the governance of the content because all this content is managed within the cycle and you can easily drag and drop into uh, the InDesign uh, through this uh, PXM plugin. So that's the first scenario just to show you how to create a simple template. Now I'm going to close this. I'm going to show you um, how to um, manipulate uh, existing template. So I have a template already created. If I go to a library, I have a static uh, catalog here. I drag and drop over here, click on here, and then load. So now I'm going to um, use a template that I already um, stored in Cycle, uh, bring it up, and then it will pull all the different content from Cycle to create this particular catalog, which is much more graphical. Um, so what I want to show you here is if I go to page two, I double click on that. Um, I'm already on the page. So if I go to inspire, so it will basically highlight all these components. So what I want to show you is if I go to the content editor, what well actually here previously, um, I have this uh, text, which is uh, the description. Here it says synthetic upper updating this one for demo. So what I'm going to do is if I go to the um, sidecar content editor, I can actually pick up that particular attribute value. Um, so now I'm going to go to running shoe. I'm going to go to inspire. Um, I am going to find that description here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this. So which represent the fact that sometimes you go and update the content. Um, so once it's done, accept, I'm going to save. So if I go back to here, go to the page, if I reload it, and you can see the uh, description um, it's gone now because I've deleted that in the content editor. So we can see how easy it is that like there's only one place that we update the content that's going to make it available online and offline and will automatically populate into the template itself. So that's the, um, the second scenario, um, how you can actually manipulate a more complicated um, uh, InDesign template uh, within using the PXM. So the last demo I want to show you is how we can programmatically uh, pull out uh, the cycle items and populate that into or render into a cycle template. So now I'm going to go to library again. I'm going to go to the dynamic um, catalog. I click on this, load the catalog. So you can see the catalog is now um, created. So it's loading, um, and uh, similarly, if I go to the page one here, um, so page one, one B, basically the one on the right, um, right hand side. So what it does is that this particular thing called the article, the article is actually a programmatic um, component where um, we are doing a filter of new as a value. Uh, to the renderers where it will render the body. Um, so what I'm going to show you is if if I'm going back into um, the content tree here, what it is doing is there are three pair of shoes uh, have the, the features new uh, check on. One is inspire, the other I think is ascend, and I think the paradox is also uh, new. So what I'm going to do is I re take away the new here save it so guess what's going to happen so um, i will expect that these three pair of um, shoes there will be only two pairs showing up so now what i need to do is i need to close this and then i click on this and re-render again so it's rendering now um, 
Now, if I come to here, you can see previously there are three shoes, and now we only have two shoes left. So we can see how easy it is. We can actually uh, use some logic to uh, inquire, inquire the field in the site called items, and then we can actually dynamic render some of the contents. So that's conclude the first scenario. So in summary, you can see how powerful is the PXM um, when you're already using a site call that you can uh, maintain the governance of your content that is published both online and offline. And um, if you know that in your organizations, um, some of your publishing people uh, or PR people, Marcom people are using InDesign, uh, I think you can actually uh, have a very interesting a story to maximize the investment already on cycle because now they have a way to um, to uh, put, um, ensure like they, the content are in sync of both offline and online together. So thank you for watching. Hope you enjoy it and uh, um, you learn something new here. Um, if you have any question, please reach out to me. Uh, my name is Anthony Chen. Uh, my email address is anch at cycle.net. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.